Good evening, guys. Happy Memorial Day. What's going on? One second. All right, I think that's going to do it. Getting other streams set up. All right, all right, let's go ahead and get started. Good evening, everybody. Um, we got a nice high chain. Everybody's high on uh, Monday here. Um, Tia, you broke the chain. Um, all righty, so. I hope you guys had a good weekend. I definitely, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people who needed a three-day weekend. Um, I did too. I didn't realize it until it was happening, but um, it was really nice uh, just to relax, um, not think about the market for once. But um, we're going to go ahead and uh, go over just just the top headlines um, from yesterday, and then we're going to go ahead and get into... Um, my watch list for this week and of course we're going to take a look at your guys's uh request and uh go from there you're good to you by the way thank you uh for uh tuning in to the uh live i do play vr live um and i shared that in the discord um and i play it with a guy who goes live on on uh youtube so if you guys ever want to see he's uh me and him are, are uh cool so um alrighty. first off um, last week we saw a huge rebound in the market. Um, we saw a S&P up 6.5%. We saw the NASDAQ up 6.8%, the Russell up 6.4%, and the Dow Jones up 6.2% as well. Uh, retail companies continue to tell the tale of two consumers as we wrap up earnings seasons. Dollar, uh, dollar stores, Dollar General, and Dollar Tree smashed earnings while mall retailer got like Gap got crushed. Um, JP Morgan boosting its net interest income, uh, giving banks uh, and overall market a lift. Um, today, uh, Tuesday's macro data put a dampen on things, or excuse me, um, on, sorry, I going over last week. Uh, so last Tuesday, Tuesday's macro data put a damper on things with as the UK PMI signaled a potential recession and the U.S. new home sales plummeted 16% year over year. On Wednesday, the Federal Reserve reiterated its commitment to fighting inflation, and the Congressional Budget Office released an upbeat forecast that suggests it believes a soft landing is possible for the U.S. economy. So a lot of bullish headlines there. So meanwhile, Friday's headline, personal cons our PCE, or P personal consumption expenditures, showed inflation slowed in April, leaving investors to wonder if we've seen the worst on the second uh, single stock front snap surprised investors by cutting guidance and sending several of its peers sliding Chinese stocks Baba JD uh, PDD uh, reported earnings and gave investors a look on how COVID-19 lockdowns are affecting their business so um it's Monday it is Monday we got to get ready uh, I I do see overbought on a lot of different time frames uh so if, if those of you who are bringing that up 100 percent um, I'm seeing that signal too, but, uh, there is such thing as a bleed up, um, and, and we might have to learn about that. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, so that's really about it. Uh, the congressional budget office released an upbeat forecast. To, oh yeah, I read that one as well. Um, and then lastly, it wouldn't be a week, of course, if, uh, Elon wasn't doing some crazy stuff. Uh, the billionaire businessman said he welcomes a global, global recession and also took aim at Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos in a series of tweets. So that new haircut's got him wilding. Um, anyway, uh, so let's look forward into the week ahead um, by going over our most important data set, which is our economic calendar. Um, so starting off, and uh, that's June 3rd or June 7th. 
Okay, there we go. Uh, so starting off on May 31st or Tuesday, we've got Consumer Confidence Chicago PMI. Those are high impact data points. On June 1st, um, we've got ISM Manufacturing PMI and Jolt's job opening at 10 o'clock. On the 2nd, we have ADP Employment Change Initial Jobless Claims. Uh, factory orders coming in as well, EAI crude inventories, unemployment, uh, oh, and uh, the third unemployment rate and non-farm payrolls, 830, and then as well as the IN, ISM non-manufacturing PMI. So eyes will be on Friday's econ unemployment rate and non-farm uh, payrolls, but here's a full list, uh, or uh, I'll drop the full list of economic er uh, earnings this week on Twitter. Uh, so if you don't use briefing.com and you don't follow me on Twitter, uh, there's two things that you can do uh, in one move. Um, dang, no comments on TikTok, but everybody's vibing. What's up, everybody? Uh, if you guys don't mind tapping your screen, um, I really do appreciate it. Um, appreciate that. Um, if you guys have any questions, too, as well, let me know. Um, or if you have any chart requests, once I get done uh, going over this stuff, um, you can drop those as well. Nice, Tia. You're in. You're in all streams. All right. So earnings this week. Um, we've got a, a few random ones. Charge Point, Nano Dimension, Salesforce. Going to be interesting. Amberella. The only reason I know this one is because of Rihanna, which she has nothing to do with that company. Um, but that's just how I associate things sometimes. Uh, HP. Uh, and then Wednesday, you're going to see headlines about it. Get ready. GameStop. Uh, Chewy. AI, um, well, GameStop being the one. Uh, Pure Storage, Hewitt Packard, those are all gonna be stocks uh, to keep an eye on uh, as well. Thursday, finishing up Crowd, Lulu, OKTA, um, Asana, uh, PD, uh, which Asana is probably gonna be uh, one of the highlights for me as well uh, this week. This stock has, um, man, total beat down, um, so. Can you look into uh, Microsoft and GameStop? Red or green tomorrow? Um, for this week, uh, I feel like we're going to see some green. I feel like we got a retest of, uh, well, I'll give you the level on SPY, but on futures right now, I'm looking at the 200 day EMA, which is uh, 4327. Um, but I also think that uh, in a downtrend, most historical downtrends, um, unless this is a trend line, I think one way or another, uh, this downtrend. So anytime you're in a bear market, uh, one of the things is, is any, anytime you're in a bear market, you're always going to see the same things on every dip. Everybody says the same thing. Is it over? And it's usually just running up to resistance. So you could see a 4420, um, you know, and still stay in a downtrend. So uh, at the moment, I'm thinking that we might see uh, another leg of green and we might hit that 431125 uh, level as well. So, um, but I'm always bearish. You guys know the deal. Um, so anyway, so my watch list uh, is not fully developed. As you guys know, I'm awaiting news. I'll be up bright and early tomorrow. Um, so we'll be going over a few things uh, in regards to um, <laughs> every time I look at Facebook, I just think of my $80 price target and I get so amped up to short this thing. Sorry. Um, so I think this thing's kind of consolidated in a triangle right now. Um, but based on its current setup right now, uh, at least we're going to see the 200s on Facebook if the market moves to the upside. I'm thinking 205. I'm thinking that if we can see uh, a, a good consolidation on Monday, I'm going to go ahead and go long on that 205, maybe into the 210s where I see resistance at. And then ultimately at that point, depending on the socio socioeconomic waters that we're swimming in um i'll be watching uh for that short entry on facebook so um catch me outside how about that uh mark zuckerberg all right so facebook's number one um this one's got that nice triangle and again i'm writing these things down um and when you're building your watch list you want to be doing the same thing writing down those details we're all human we all forget don't try and be a superhuman um and so just looking for the third wave here, uh, anytime I'm inside of a setup such as this one, 
I'm looking for one, two, three. I'm also not blind to a higher time frame setup, which does have Facebook possibly even moving higher. Um, what I'm anticipating here, and I'll go ahead and say it now, um, what I'm anticipating here for Facebook is a run up to either A, resistance, but what's gonna happen is you're gonna see everybody in retail likely reacting to this, right? And being that this is a triangle, it's gonna break out. And so people are gonna go long. And it's my my thoughts that we're gonna see the 20, 220s at the most, 225, um, before seeing Facebook uh, pull back. There is an unfilled gap all the way to the upside around 230. So that's not outside of the question as well. And we do have some major lagging moving averages as well, um, moving even further back. So if you run this from the top, and pull it down, you'll see those moving averages uh, kind of in concurrence to there. Uh, is there any mods in here? Uh, we got we got the uh, boys. No, Tia, yeah, I'll make you a mod. Uh... If you want to. Okay. All right. Um. The gap will recover probably. I certainly hope so. Um, and I, I think that if we do see a market bleed up, what you're going to see is people trying to guess, guess the top. Um, and that's not what I'm going to be doing. I'm, I'm going to be going, you know, obviously step by step, but I'm also some people and oftentimes reach, you know, that I am retail. We're all retail, but the over when we say retail, we mean your average, you know, bear, your, you know, getting into the chasers, the people who don't put the effort into it. Uh, those are more there, there are more of those than there are people who are digging into the work and trying to do it themselves. Um, but that being said, this would still remain in this channel in this downtrend. Um, but if they saw this pattern, that lower time frame pattern that I'm talking about break, they wouldn't see this channel. Um, so that, that's what I'm anticipating here. So 225. Uh, but we're probably going to look to uh, uh, possibly at least on Monday or on Tuesday, uh, take this up to the 206 and 210 levels. So um, expansion fibs is how you get your targets. Um, there's a multitude of different ways to get your targets. Um, I what I do is I, I draw um, my dynamic setup and then I completely forget about what I've just done and I start going over my key levels. Um, now, some people like to use fibs. Um, we just had a class um, on fibs and <clears throat> it's posted um, as well on our YouTube, so you can find that there. Uh, but uh, there's a multitude of different ways. You know, every trader has their own uh, preferences um, on how they find targets and stuff like that. I just go with key levels. So, hey, Potter, what's up, Jordan? um GameStop and Microsoft I will I'm happy to take a look at those in just a moment so um but anyway that's a uh, this is Facebook uh in that channel uh we'll be keeping an eye on that one uh so as you guys know um we're we're wrapped up um in a in a battle with uh ba Baba Baba um now I'm going against the grain here and this thing definitely has you know what could be perceived to be uh, as a double bottom. Um, this one did pull back on the lower time frame. We did nail that rising wedge. We played it to the downside. It did hit support and futures are up. So uh, the consensus of Chinese stocks at the moment is that most of them are struggling uh, w with earnings, with the, the lockdown, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm wondering if that plays a part or if it just runs up with the overall market. So BABA has a ton of gaps and they are not guaranteed to get filled, but the nearest one that I have is 101. So BABA to the upside has a gap and BABA runs. Um, if it does have the market on can in fact uh, make a move up there or at least to around $97. So I'll be watching BABA up or down. Uh, if I play it up, it's just money so that I can take it down later on. Um, just kidding, TikTok, it's all different. Um, all right, so, uh, uh, when you add contracts to a green trade, do you choose the same strike usually? Uh, no, I usually pick new targets. Uh, if I believe that it has the juice to go higher, then I go ahead and I add. Um, so. Uh, 
Uh, most of the time, I'll either go with a strike that's around my target or a high delta, high OI. Um, so. All right. Um, so we got Facebook. And of course, we've been rocking NVIDIA. Um, NVIDIA gave us a really weak break. This one does have, if you uh, zoom out to the double bottom, or excuse me, to the to the daily here, this one, like a lot of different charts um, across the market, is inside of this channel. We've got one, two, and so there is a good chance that at least we see a NVIDIA moving up to around 212.60 if we do continue to the upside. But the target on, on Tuesday, um, it's going to be hard to, to not keep doing that. Um, the target on Tuesday for NVIDIA, and I pretty much got it marked here, uh, it's as simple as this, y'all. Uh, it's supply and demand. And so with that being said, I've got a target in the center at 192.50 and then above that at 202.50. So NVIDIA looks really good just for some solid continuation. It's got a, this candle, daily candle engulfed, pretty much a week of struggles um, to the downside. So the, the downside is definitely exhausted. Um, but this is what I'm projecting um, for NVIDIA is a possible run up to at least the 222s. I don't know if we're going to get into the 240s. Could be there is a gap up there, but we'll talk about that in the weeks to come. So do I have any videos on supply and uh, demand? Um, no, I don't. But that's definitely something I could do. Uh, do I trade with a lot of contracts? Um, so I run two accounts normally. Uh, I always try and keep one open. Um, but I trade on a 30K account um, that I basically have 30K sitting in there and I trade on it for the month and I pull out whatever I've made. Um, so the sizes, the size or lot size is usually around five to 10, depending on the stock. If it's American Airlines, I might catch 25, right? I might catch 30 contracts, but um, you know, it depends on the strategy, depends on what I'm doing, it depends on how I feel about the play, depends on the risk. Um, you know, it's all case by case. But uh, for the most part, um, on a good scalp, good volume, um, you know, I'm going to do 10 to 10, five to 10 contracts, depending on the stock and the premium. Um, and then, uh, you know, again, it's <laughs> NVIDIA and Tesla and Facebook and Apple, all, you know, different premiums. So, um, all right, last one that I have on the watch list is Apple. So Apple is, it, it, I don't know how, how much clearer this one can get. The only thing that I could see is a possible rejection um, here and a pullback uh, to create what would likely be a inverse head and shoulders, right? Because it has a perfect setup to do so. You've got the shoulder there, you've got the head there. So there is a possibility that we get a jerk down, maybe scoop up a few more bear bodies, and then run it back up. But regardless, this one's got a clear target of around 153 uh, to the upside. So I'm anticipating a 153 target, maybe 154, depending on how fast and, and how crazy Tuesday is. So um, hopefully people are eager to buy um, just at the bell. Um, who's ready for tomorrow? I am definitely ready for tomorrow. Oh, I love these lives. Oh, I love your lives. Um, I made $7.63 on your stock pick last week. Let's go. You've been doing, you know what? Your consistency chart goobers is, uh, is, uh, just the best. Um, so anyway, we're going to watch all of these. I am setting up for day trade swing trades going into this week. We're not going to be swing trading on Thursdays or on Wednesday. Uh, to Well, I'm not going to be. Uh, basically, Wednesday to Friday. Um, I do believe that the economic data that we have at the end of the week might cause a little bit of unsteadiness. Um, we've got a lot of it. So uh, be prepared and um, make sure that if you do have a watch list, that you're doing the work tonight. Um, I also want to stop really, really quickly. If you are new to trading, if you have been struggling for a long time, last week was not good, okay? There's a lot of people who have been doing this for a while and they did great. And I'm not talking about my Discord, I'm talking about in general because I pay attention to my followers. Um, I pay attention to the people who are not in my Discord, um, YouTube, et cetera, et cetera, you know, and the content that they post. Um, and so, one thing um 
your attitude going into this week, you know, it, it, it literally is sometimes a day. Uh, anybody who's had, you know, life change ev- events, you know, sometimes it's just a single day, sometimes it's a week, sometimes it's a month, but changing your attitude about what you're going to do that week um, and putting some of the stuff behind. I know a lot of you uh, who follow me, um, especially our new followers, have lost a considerable amount of money um, doing the same thing over and over, right? So, what you need to do is be realistic with yourself and where you're at in your journey. Uh, if you're new to this and you got really lucky, that was j- they have a saying that the first one is free. Okay, the market will give you the first one free, and after that, you got to actually. That's when the emotions kick in, um, and so. If, if this is the week, you know, set a watch list, set targets, stop messing around with weeklies and thus you're ready for them. Um, and, um, you know, if you care about your, your account and, you know, your future and stuff like that, you know, like put the effort into um, doing what it takes to uh, make a plan and stick to it. Um, because, again, these emotions that every single one of us have, I have. Uh, you have, we, we, we all feel things and the market makes us feel things. Um, it, so it's a challenge for all of us, but it's doable. Um, and we do that by gaining an understanding of what's going on and being real with ourselves. Oftentimes in any situation in your life, doesn't matter what it is, uh, you got to be real with yourself uh, in order to kind of face reality and then do something about it. Um, so if it's broken, fix it. If it's not, don't until it's broken and then maybe fix it. All right. Um, done ranting. So I am on YouTube. If anybody here on TikTok wants to hop over um, on to YouTube, uh, the latency is extremely low. So uh, I am uh, the, the screen is right here. Uh, TikTok. So I can see all of our chats. Uh, so if you want to talk and see my screen, um, yeah, let me know. Uh, MACD on the Apple switched from negative to positive. Yes, it, it does have, well, I'm using the TTM, but you do see the potential rollover happening here. Um, and the RSI is starting to climb over the center level. So I think this is a big week. Uh, and I do think that we're going to see um, a potential bleed up. So I uh, changed my style Monday, Tuesday and got killed, switched back to day trading and finished 3K. Craig, so uh, think about it this way. Um, every single style is like you're nude and you have like it is brand new so almost you have to treat it almost like that's a like you're just getting back into trading so if you're getting into swing trading from scalping you know like start with that 500 that 100 dollars you know to get the mechanics down uh and get a grip on like the emotional aspects of it so um Anyway, uh, YouTube channel, the link is in my bio if you want to hop on the YouTube channel. Um, We are live right now. So, um, all right, if you are in the YouTube channel um, or TikTok, um, no promise that I'm going to be able to see your request, but dollar sign, all caps, uh, and leave your request, please, um, in the uh, above. In the above. Please leave request in above please um so big step and uh, i don't see anyone okay sq big stepper asked about apple um which means he's probably going to be watching apple so uh just to dig in a little bit deeper here so we got some key levels here this is a confluence for me um you probably already see this too 200 day ema 50-day EMA all congregating together. Um, There is, again, the possibility for the inverse head and shoulders. This is a powerful move off of support. Two massive candles. Um, That weekly, also, if you step out to the weekly uh, weekly, uh, setup, you'll see that we've got an engulfment candle. Uh, So seeing continuation, and I I think this just gets down to as simple as supply and demand, uh, where we're likely to see the the 150s, 160s uh, get hit. It, but I believe that this range, and I'm going to mark it out really quick, is going to be where we, we see uh, the most uh, resistance, and that's going to be in here. So as we climb into this area towards the end of the week, you'll probably see um, kind of a lack of volume there. So um, ABDC pattern will stop your yellow line, then fall. Stop. So ABCD pattern will stop at your yellow line, then fall. So that's a that's actually a great 
I don't know what you're looking at, and I don't have an ABDC pattern uh, set up right now, but that is a confluence, okay? So when you see multiple things can, can like moving together, one of the things that I did, and they're always kind of circulating in my mind, is I've explored, if, if somebody sends me an indicator, I look at it, right? The buy, sell indicators, all of it. I look at it and I pay attention to like, what is it, what is it firing off on? What is it, what moves it, et cetera, et cetera. And sometimes I find no use for it, but oftentimes if I see a lot of confluences with it, that movement sticks with my, in my mind. So, um, but anyway, for Apple, I think it's just a simple, almost uh, like this step where you see that big bounce right here. Um, I'm looking for one more of these. And then I, I believe, I believe that we will see a reversal um, for the, uh, for the first time, we've seen a wide red spread on, on Apple to the downside. So four hour base rally base. I could see a base rally base. Um, the only thing that I wouldn't want to see with a base rally base um, is I wouldn't really want to see a, like a doji, you know, Chris. Uh, I just want to send it. So that's the only the only the only thing here. Um, OK, um, what's next? We've got a uh, SQ with a possible gap fill. Um, remember setting alerts. If you're not setting alerts, what are you doing? What are you doing? All right, so anytime I'm looking at the daily right here, I wanna go mark out those major, major zones. Get an idea of what we got going on structure wise. Anytime that those are unclear, oftentimes I'll whip out the pivot point and it'll make it clear just like that. Um, so anyway, good level there. That's where we just launched off of, uh, right out of that falling wedge that we were talking about too, because that thing sent it. Um, love the content, just topped over from t uh, TikTok. Oh, nice, the Chibis. I don't know what that means, but I like. Uh, I wanna say that word more. Chibis, Chib Chibis, the Chibis. Yo, what's up? I am in IMPP. You, I got a, a great setup. Um, tweet it to me. You know, you guys are always welcome to tweet. Here, here's what I'm throwing out there. And you, the 126 people and 44 people on YouTube, if you're on Twitter and you have a chart, you can tweet that chart at me whenever, like in the future, if I have time. That's the only fact, uh, variable there. Um, you know, I would be happy to like just chart it up really quick and throw it back at you. Or if it looks good, yeah, send it right back. So anyway, um, really quickly, uh, I'm gonna pull the pivots back up. Um, no, those look, that looks good. Uh, so this one, uh, and I do see your gap. Your gap is at 95, 96. Um, your supply is at 98 dollars. Uh, followed by that middle ground right there around 102. Uh, so looking at square on uh, stepping back actually, and looking at square on the daily, pulling down that downtrend, right? Because it is it is a real downtrend. Um, there is a. So I'm going to throw this out there, and if I'm right, um, I'll, I might gloat about it a little bit um but uh, or i'll possibly just forget that i ever said anything at all um but one thing that i noticed with square is it never gave us a major retest um it did fall from the 190s and i'm not saying by any means that we're going to see a bleed up that far but if i'm running a resistance from the down from down here right um from the top and then all the way down you see a very very clear um, so anytime I see the stock moving at an angle like that, candle closes at an angle, that's important to me um, in charting. And so looking at that, uh, I see a bunch of uh, targets in the 160s and 170s, you know, maybe even potentially 180. But in the meantime, in the meantime, um, there's one thing that has to happen for Square and it has to break higher. So it needs to break out of what could potentially be a bear flag. So I would say anywhere above 9250, uh, watch for a slam into 9760. So look at this supply. If you're looking at supply and demand, this is a great example of it. So let's zoom in a little bit more. So if you're looking at it Tuesday, you're going to have a couple of different levels to watch. 
There you go. That's money. There's your gap. So for square, this is what I would anticipate. I would anticipate if you do end up, and, and again, you know, I, I'm not certain that this is going to play out by any means um, in regards to the uh, uh, bear flag, but if it does break above that 92.75, 92.50, watch for that gap fill. So $93 gap fills to 96.20, and then I would overshoot that and look for 97.80, $98 because that's likely where you'll see that that first major um, tap. There's a couple micro levels to watch for, um, and I'm going to mark those out really quickly. That's going to be 95.63, which is a psychological. Bear's going to make the uh, Potter Stocks versus Starboy. Uh, Longevity-wise, um, always me, dude. Always me. Um, I, I've never, ever remotely lost that much of my account. Uh, ever. I, I don't blow. I mean, he's young. Go ahead. You know, do, do your thing. If you're that young and you got money to blow and you make a lot of money... I mean, that's that's about that's one thing about being young is you, risk has less. Well, not all risk. Don't take my advice. But, you know, some risk doesn't have major repercussions uh, until you're older and you're like, Fuck, I really need that money now. But um, but yeah. Um, if you guys don't mind on TikTok, if you guys don't mind tapping your screen. I appreciate you all very, very much. Um, all right. So that's SQ. Uh, that one's looking pretty good. Uh SQ, well, SQ on daily bearish flag, yes. So let's go to the four hour. That That's where I would want to see the bear flag, right? Because on the four hour, let, let, let's really dig into this because because we, we want to we wanna find out, right? It's, it's always worth figuring out. Okay. Okay, so... If this is a bearish flag, it could be, right? I would give you 95.80. 95.80 and or, right, pullback because it's all about timing. It's all about timing. If you look down here, obviously each candle, you can look at the potential movement, look at a pot, and this is why in my head, oftentimes I'll time things in my head like, okay, uh, there's absolutely no way. Okay, let me, let me walk you through this because I don't want to confuse y'all. So there's a gap here, right? Like literally right there. It cannot go and fill that gap by just shooting straight up, right? It would literally need to pull back, which would be good, and then shoot up because th at that point, that gap would get filled and then if this is a bear flag, you would see that rejection. So that's what I would be watching for square. It looks good. Um, I'm actually going to throw it on the watch list really quickly um, just because it does have, I, I'm, I'm more or less curious to see how it plays out. If it ends up playing out like a bear flag, which now I'm going to go back at my other charts and make sure I don't see any other bear flags. So um, got a channel going. Yeah. So, I mean, this just could be simply an uptrending channel. Um, but at the moment, if it does see a third rejection and we freaking parabolically poop, um, then, you know, SQ down to, you know, back down to new lows. But um, in the meantime, this looks like it's going to possibly go at least for the gap fill. I'm going to leave this little projection out there. Uh, I'll tweet this out. And I, for I forgot to do that with the other ones. But um, I'll tweet this out really quick. So if you follow me on Twitter or if you don't follow me on Twitter, go ahead and do that. Um, and I'll tweet the chart out uh, so that way you can go look at it mark it on your own chart, you know, go figure out why, you know, why is this crazy dude marking this line, et cetera, et cetera. I'm waiting for a short setup on everything. Don't, yeah, I, I agree. I want to go short too, but um, I can't let my biasness get to me. You know what I mean? All right. So SQ is looking pretty good. Um, thank you guys. Those of you on, uh, uh youtube okay sq next one we got is rdfn and I, I, this one I, I, it's got to be close 
All right, so the last time that we talked about Redfin, uh, we talked about a couple of different things. So let's let's start over really quick. We're on the four hour time frame, starting from the highs, running it down, seeing through the noise. Um, a lot of the times, yes, you can, it can be wick on, um, but what I look for is respect. Again, when I'm charting, I'm looking for overall like charting, like just the chart to respect uh, the setup that is given. So. When I say that, I'm looking for body candle closes over wicks, right? One, two, three rejections all at the same line. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that there, run it off of the body candle closes there, and then what I get looks as if, and this is gonna line up most likely with my target to the upside. Okay, so yeah, maybe, but, um, so what it looks like is you possibly bottoming out here. I think it's a little bit too early to tell. Um, so you might be able to look at this as a potential support. You definitely have a little smaller, lower time frame downtrend that just broke. So look at the hourly. Zoom in a little bit. Let's check out that triangle. Yeah, that's absolutely perfect. Um, Watch for Redfin to break above 11 bucks, 10.95. Watch it at 10.95. If it doesn't break above 10.95, I would watch this thing to go back down to 9, 9.20, 9.75 and then break to the downside. Um, so this one is a bilateral pattern. Um, so if you're looking at it, and by the way, really quick, here's a quick tip if you're new, all right? Gonna break off from analysis really quick. If you're brand new to charting, Okay, don't ever let anybody tell you that you can't do this, all right? It's a little, I wouldn't even call it a cheat code, but it, it, it helps your brain identify patterns without, lo you're not looking at the candles. Um, so what you do is you just go pull up the pattern, right? Check that out. So it is perfectly acceptable to practice charting like this. It is 100% acceptable and what you can do and what it often will do is consolidate the data in order to give you a more accurate, uh, not always, but sometimes. So it's worth exploring and it is something that I, I do often. Um, but uh, if you are new to charting, this definitely works on like lower time frames, like 15 minutes, um, 10 minute time frames. This is what Robinhood uses. Robinhood presents their charts on 10 minute for time frames. Um, so uh, it, it, again, just, just a thought, so. Hmm, yep. Anyway. Thought you vanished, been missing you. Um, you know, I, there's no way to, I've just been having a lot of shit go on. Um, I think Mercury's in Powerade or something right now, so that's probably why, but um, on another level, just life has been happening, so I have, you know, been dealing with that, but um, that was, I, I, I'm, you know, for social media and stuff, as long as I show up on live, you know, I feel, I feel good about it. Um, I don't feel as bad because I obviously want to show up, um, but uh <clears throat> Content wise, you know, I'll, I'll skip out on a little bit of content for my mental health. So um, if you drop that request, if you have a request and it's getting wiped out on the screen, you're having to repeat it, hit the link in my bio, go to the YouTube and drop the request there. So um, anyway, that's Redfin. Um, Amazon is next. So I already have I've, I've been tracking this one. I. Uh, my chart's all messed up. So this one looks like it's in the beginning of a, a channel of some sort. Um, I, ha I haven't quite like tracked out the resistance here, but I'm thinking it's right there. Uh, so watch for Amazon to give yourself, just like Apple, uh, you've got 23.24 and it did fill its gap, uh, higher time frame, just like Apple, everything looks the exact same th thing. So uh, four hour time frame. Uh, this was a, also a descending me megaphone pattern, if anybody was curious. Um, this is now double bottomed. Okay, that's number one. 
Uh, from this double bottom, the first immediate target is going to be 2360 and then the $2,400 level. It's that simple. If this is a double bottom, um, I don't see anything except for that. So kind of like Apple, which you'll notice it has about the same target, 2,500 is, is the first immediate target that I could see from Amazon moving to the upside. I do believe that their split is coming soon. So yeah, the sixth. So you might see an angry Amazon uh, moving to the upside with some with some vigor. And admittedly, because they dumped into its split, I might might grab shares of Amazon because I really don't see them collapsing. Um, but uh, I might, might. I might hedge myself too. Um, this one's RSI, everything about Amazon really. I, shit, I might have to write that one down too. Damn, Amazon's looking juicy. Looks like it throttled back a bit. So anyway, that's Amazon at the moment. You are up against resistance. That's very obvious. Um, mark those key levels out for yourself. So obviously above you, you've got 2315. Next key level is right here, already marked out by a wick and a body candle close. That's gonna be 2360, like I said before. And then above that, you've got another key level and that's 2400. So those are some levels to watch. Uh, for Amazon. Anytime I'm done charting, because I'm not charting with my ego, I will definitely throw my pivot points up there and I'll go and see where where are all my lines. And I, I almost just wigged out just looking at this. Look at this. Do you see that right there? People ask me, how do you find your targets? I look for where the data is collecting. Where is the data at? Where is the, that sound like a total nerd, um, but uh, where is the data? Um, <laughs> where is the data at? Where is all of the volume? Where is where is our wall? So if you look right here at this mark, you'll notice that there's a, a lack of volume, right? So I think that we could see Amazon give us a jolt. There is a gap also to fill at 2,500, uh, but that's that's a ways away. So. But damn, this shit looks sick. This is like a kickflip of a chart. Now, don't be surprised, and I, I don't know if it's going to happen, but don't be surprised if we go down before we go up. Everybody's juiced up right now, so just be careful. Um, all right, so BA is the next one. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, wow. Yo, I love when I come back to a chart like months later, and I've already got it charted out, and it did exactly what I thought it was going to do. So it, it it's just charting is like that's, that's pop, half of why I love what I do is I, I really do love technical analysis. It's fun. Um, but uh, this one broke out of a falling wedge. It's giving you a 50% reversal. If you look at the daily time frame, it's also testing that S1 or your previous supply, which is 133. I would say that uh, really the 135 level to your psychological, that's going to be the next level above you. If you can get above that, you've got 140. And, and Boeing moves like that. I'm not sure. I don't keep up with the airline industry at the moment. Um, but uh, like I, I just don't keep up with the overall uh, incoming news, I guess, if you will. But um, I would say that based on this chart, uh, you should see Boeing around 140.75. So I'm going to start writing down my targets so I can go back and wig out about it by myself. Uh, so I said BA, BA 140.75 by end of week. Watch, we just dump. Uh, what indicator is that with the lines? You said supply? Uh, no, I'm marking out my supply and demand. So areas of consult, and I just simplify it, right? Because the explanation can get possibly more complicated. Um, I just simplify it by by saying zones. Um, so, i.e. Boeing right here. Oops. So this zone right here, where you see one, two, three, right? Three taps. 
and you also got this right here. Now it's a little bit, obviously this is a gap down, so we opened here, but this is where the resistance lies. One, two, three. And uh, with that being said, uh, that's gonna be a supply zone above you. Um, this be right below us, so this little zone that we've built here for Boeing, um, and I mean, yeah, it's probably gonna be there. Uh, oftentimes in any zone, you'll have that little 50% mark kind of dividing it. Um, and that's what you're seeing there, pivot. Um, but uh, if we leave that, then you'll have a demand zone below you, so. I've dropped four pins. Uh, Fibonacci is good. There's a video on my YouTube uh, with uh, Manny um, going over those. So um, yeah, 140, 140.75. Uh, I think for green on Boeing pullback. Don't be surprised if we see a pullback into 123. It's possible for the inverse head and shoulders that I've been talking about, but we just came out of an inverse head and shoulders. The overall market did, so I'm not sure we're going to make another one, but uh, AMD. AMD. Ew. Why is he? Why? Ew. Why does it look like that? Okay, so this actually looks a bit like. Yeah, this looks uh, kind of like Apple. So here's your little four hour channel. Now, one, two, and then what I'm thinking, look at the 200 day moving average. I get gassed up when I see confluences like that. That is exactly what I wanna see. And so when I see a confluence like that, I go and I drop a line and I go look for a key level. Why? Because the more the better, the more data, the better. Where's the data? Give me the data. I need it right here. Beautiful, 106.12. So watch 106.12 to the upside, maybe 107, give or take, depending on the trajectory, but uh, I would say 106, somewhere in there. I'm gonna mark that out. So AMD 106. Uh, I'm not saying that AMD or any of these stocks are, I'm saying that that's likely where we're gonna go. I'm not saying that we are going to fall there. Um, but uh, it's possible, it's possible, because that would make another bear flag. Let me go see something, hold on, hold on. Let me see. Yeah, whatever, we'll leave that alone. All right, uh, so we've got Tesla, another juicy one. So this one I've got in one of the wildest patterns, and I'm not exactly sure, but the more that I go over this setup, the more that I'm like, nope, that's definitely there. Um, so Tesla, Tessie uh, has got a descending megaphone, okay? Now, a lot of the times these can be reversal patterns, which could possibly send Tesla up to like, you know, $1,500, you know, I, I, does that happen right now? I don't think so. There has to be a reason, you know, but they do say, you know, buy when it's ugly, sell when it's pretty, um, but everything is flipping over for Tesla. So you've got the TTM squeeze flipping over. You've got great volume consistently coming after earnings, pulling back afterwards too. You've got the RSI climbing over that uh, 50 mark. Um, and of course, you know, uh, I, the RSI, I don't use it, you know, like consistently. It's not one of like my main indicators, but most of the time when we cross over that 50, it's going to give you a move into the 80s. So I, I'm thinking that at least uh, for Tesla, and again, let's go down to the hourly time frame. Okay, let's go to the 15. So... I'm going to be honest with you all. I, I just feel like we might see a pullback Monday, um, you know, maybe initially at the bell um, enough, maybe even just to wrap in some sellers. But Tesla is one of those stocks that has like ripped. It just like kind of really needs to pull back. It's got a gap down here to 706. Um, but one thing that I usually look for is where the stock is at currently. So again, we go over these setups every night. Um, what is trending uh, right now? Uh, USO SMH is uh, trending. Um, sometimes you can find. Uh, sometimes you can find. What the hell? Uh, damn! So people are shaking their head at the SMH top analyst price targets. I don't know. I don't understand. Well, I'd love to find out more about why that's trending, but uh, 
I don't understand. Everybody's bearish on uh, SMH. Let's go look it up. Doing stock research. Shares. Of, uh, I've got nothing. No, no news here. Uh, anyway, SMH is trending. Um, what are those? Uh, mostly cryptos. Make sure to tap the screen. Yo, thank you guys. 12.8K. That's what's up. I appreciate y'all. Um, if you guys are not able to get your request in and you've repeated yourself multiple times and I'm missing it, hit the link in the bio, hop into YouTube. Uh, I think it takes like 30 seconds or a minute for you to be able to leave a comment, drop your request, and then dip. You can go right back to TikTok if you wish. Um, all right. So anyway, coming back from all of that, simple downtrend for Tesla is right here. Okay. Tesla has a target, which would be around its 200 day moving average, which is around 885. Um, that is also your point of control as well as just a beautiful supply zone above you. Uh, I remember shorting this. Do you guys remember shorting this? Do you guys, do you remember, do you remember being that bearish? It was amazing. Dreams really do come true. All right. Um, so again, um, micro levels here to mark out, to watch. Um, of course, below you, 744. 744. If you lose 744, watch for Tesla to potentially go for that gap fill and watch the 703 or $700 level for a bounce. If you do, which you can still form an inverse head and shoulders from there. If you do not, the first immediate target above you is 781.84. It's right alongside that 200 day moving average, which is right at 7, uh, 7.95. So a um, lot of little kind of like macro levels, but some of the bigger ones um, are right here. So uh, if you guys uh, want to screenshot that or just I'll tweet that out really quick. What am I? What are my thoughts on the last two days? The market was open. Um, Jersey girl, drop that resist or drop that comment on the YouTube really quick for me if you don't mind. Um, what am I? Uh, what am I, my thoughts? I think that was a squeeze, um, and I think that right now they're pumping good news off of that technical squeeze. And so everybody's talking about soft landings and things getting better. Um, and uh, oftentimes that'll give you the bleed up that we've been talking about for a while. Um, and I think the last pump kind of was, you know, disillusioned. Um, it seemed like it was, seemed like it wasn't. But uh, in this case, um, I think that a lot of people got squeezed out of position. Um, and uh, yeah. I mean, you saw, I mean, it was, it, you could see Tesla about to break out a mile away. It was, it had a, a beautiful falling wedge. I mean, absolutely textbook. Uh, this is textbook, by the way, uh, literally. So when I find a falling wedge, that's as perfect as this. Um, so the way that I even place targets is I measure from the top to the bottom, make it drop. And then I do 50%, right? So either by I, and it's really funny because guess where that 50% mark? That's my point of control. That's my point of control. I love it, but that's how I find it. And that's 750 as well. Day 21 of asking Potter to do a backflip. I did one on the trampoline uh, with my kids uh, two days ago. I guess I should have recorded. Actually, I shouldn't have recorded that. Um, but uh, I am... I realized how 30 year old I am uh, by doing a backflip, landing on my ass and hitting the trampoline so hard that I actually hit the ground. Um, and then I had to go to the scale and just uh, recalibrate my reality really quick. So post and tag, hell no. Nah. I do have children, yes. I made them out of clay, like dreidels. Um, I'm sorry, uh, just kidding. <laughs> Um, bro, you don't have look, bro, you don't have look three. You don't, I don't look 30. Yeah, I'm 30 years old. I'm 30 years old. <laughs> nah, y'all, I'm 30. I'm 30. 
Don't let it, don't let it fool you. All the preservatives, ramen noodles. Um, I'm just kidding. Bullish all week. I see you. All right. Um, <laughs> so the next one that I got on the on the list right now is Spy. Uh, we've already covered Spy, um, but uh, just to reiterate it right now, the first logical target I have is 418 on the money um, to the upside. So watch 418, but also watch for that pullback that I've been talking about. One thing that I also like to do is find out where is my lower time frame trend, and that's where my lower time frame trend line is. And my lower time frame trend line is also backed up, and I use EMAs because I like to see those that extra set of data. They are not dictating my trades, but they are only backing up the analysis that I'm placing on top of them. And so you'll notice that that 50, 50 EMA is perfectly, not just aligned, but perfectly aligned with that trend line that I have there, um, as well as the point of control. So that being said, it is t entirely possible and completely healthy to pull back, right? Because any time, what do we do? What do we do any time we break a level? And what would collect a lot of premium right now as everybody's still curious as to what is about to happen? So there is a possibility we start this week red, right? And then bounce and send it. To the upside which i would anticipate i would absolutely say that 420 uh 50 and 418 are logical targets to the upside um but just looking at any level anytime you break the floor right because if the floor becomes the ceiling and the ceiling becomes the floor or this floor whatever um we broke through that ceiling and we have not tested it it's going to get retested if it's not today it'll be tomorrow if it's not tomorrow it'll be the next day or the day after that or the day after that. Or the day after that. All right. Uh, so the next one we've got is ATER. Uh, this one looks like a hot crock of boo boo. Um, all right. Well, let's 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 not judge it already. Let's let's calm down. Uh, nope. I'm sticking with that analysis. Oh my god. Boo boo. Uh, so this chart is, of course, I don't know what happened or what they did wrong, um, who hurt them, uh, but you did, you do have a, I just don't like to put charts on top of this stuff because it just doesn't ever seem to play out, but it appears to have what looks, it looks like a falling wedge. I'll give you that. Um, but if you wipe all of that away, uh, ATR looks like it might give you a run to the upside, right? But... Probably not in the way that you want it to, as it looks like it wants to set up for a bear flag. So watch for ATR to run up, maybe give you a run to 414. Yeah, market runs up, maybe we see small caps move with it. Yeah, that's that's what I would venture to guess right here, because it looks like that's your support anywhere below $3 and uh, you're probably gonna hit the dumpy down to 237, so. Um, can I chart Bark? Bark. Bark. Tesla submitted application under Rule 24B requesting the extension of previous grant of confidential treatment of information. <laughs> Maxwell, interesting. I thought that was going to say uh, Ghislaine Maxwell. I was like, oh, God. 80% on portfolio off of that Tesla pump. Let's go, dude. That's what's up. Uh, I got your CCL request. I see that. He really looked at SMH first thing. Why is this trending? Yeah, I mean, I'm curious. Is, is SMH a crypto? It's a meme. I don't know that. Yeah, I don't know that. I, I, I'm, I'm a stock dude, so. See, that shit doesn't even come up for me. Where's SMH? Y'all trading some random things. Um, all right. So, any, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, isn't ATER heavily shorted? It beats me. I don't know. Um, you can look there. ATER short sale volume doesn't look very high to me. I don't know. 
Not to me, anyway. I don't know what high is for this thing, but... Looks like it could be higher. All right. The next one that I got, and I'm making my way down the list right now, so if you've been patiently waiting, I very much appreciate you. Play the market, not your biased. Exactly. You can think it's going to be a bear flag, and then if you really hope it's going to be a bear flag, and that's all you're thinking about, guess what? You're going to be a bear flag. All right, these levels are about as clear as day. You know, um, I'm uh, not in the place yet where I want to start DCAing uh, PLTR, but I might buy a few shares this week. And, you know, I just want to throw this out there for, you know I, know, I know I do day trading and stuff like that. But if you're buying long-term companies and the money you're putting into it makes you feel nervous, uh, start looking into the company. Go find out who the CEOs are. Uh, go find out what it means to be a good company. Go look at partnerships. Uh, go look, go watch a couple of, uh, I mean, really, if you put about, you know, two, three, four hours into it, uh, you can come out feeling a little bit better about your purchase. But also, um, that DCA works magic, y'all, because right now I'm buying companies little by little. And if I was using any remote, any, like any size whatsoever, uh, I would probably be uh, very scared. So, um, but uh, PLTR, if the overall market ends up pulling down, I think we'll see a PLTR around $4. Unfortunately. Um, so anyway, lastly, this thing is running up to resistance. One, two. So again, confluences. I want to see a couple of different things moving together, set up together to kind of give me a picture of what potentially could be happening, right? So I see this channel here on PLTR. I see the top of this channel filling this gap. Why? I mean, just timing wise, this is set up perfectly to do so. Um, but we'll, I mean, really the gap is here, um, but uh, we'll just uh, leave the gap where it's at. So you have the remainder of the gap to 887 up to around 950. The gap closes at 946. So you could see a 950, 960 tap, which would be your daily downtrend. And then from there, you know, it's kind of a crapshoot. It's one, two, three. And I will tell you, if you're looking at, I mean, if you're thinking about wave theory, but regardless, keep the technical stuff out of here, right? Let's just keep it simple. One, two, three. Okay, so one, two, I've got two at the bottom, I've got two at the top. It's running up and it's gonna hit the third first, right? So if I see a rejection there, I am more than likely going to take a sh sh more buy, maybe not even, just on a technical level, I'm gonna be taking that setup because of the way that it, it, it it's, it's setting up on a wave level, right? Because it is that magic three, right? Because any time a resistance gets hit thir three times, that's it. For, for me, that's it. You know, lower time frames, sometimes you'll see someone squeeze somebody out. Um, but PLTR below $8 again, $7.80, uh, that's gonna, it's probably going to hit the dumpy again. So, um, yeah, the line, sh what patterns are most common in technical analysis? Uh, it actually has a lot to do with the market in, in question. Um, bull flags are always number one. You're always going to hear people talk about bull flags, bear flags, um, symmetrical triangles um, form quite often. Um, falling markets, you get a lot of falling wedges, uh, which is bear usually bearish, uh, bear rally type, you know, movement. Um, double tops um, on a trending market to the upside or to the downside. Uh, you don't see those very often. You, you'll see lower time frame double bottoms. Um, but on trend shifts during, you know, hourly time frames and stuff like that, you know, you're going to see those those head and shoulders, those t uh, uh, double tops. So I wouldn't, there's almost like certain, ti uh, certain times or seasons in the market uh, will give you more of a particular setup. Um, so say you're... Say you're in a really like in a market that's facing a bunch of indecision, then you may find yourself, um, you know, in more consolidation patterns where you may see more triangles, you know, stuff like that. So, 
Um, okay, uh, Doctor Drunk Ape says Walmart and Macy's. Um, if you don't mind, if you guys are on TikTok right now, uh, the link in my bio, um, you can go to YouTube really quick and drop any requests that you have. Um, and that way I can take a look at them um, and uh, your request won't get swallowed whole. So, and Costco, this man's a, a man of value. Um, so anyway, that's a PLTR, kind of looking like that bear flag setup. Uh, again, I'll set an alert on that trend line so I can gloat to myself about it later if it does fall. If it doesn't, I'll delete all the lines and pretend like it never happened. All right. Um, RDNF SEC filing on the 524. Okay. Yeah, that's so anytime that y'all ask me for technical analysis, you know, what I hope is that you have already already have some type of catalyst in your mind or something that has already occurred. And what I can't do for you is I can't tell you off top, right, how valuable that is to a random business. I have no idea about this SEC, SEC filing for Redfin. I, you know, not to say that that's not taking anything away from it, but just as a tech, someone who's doing technical analysis, um, you know, that's where that magic combination of having that little bit of fundamental and technical, uh, because one feeds off of another. So, and a lot of the times we know this to be a fact. News is released strategically, right? So. Thanks for the advice on boxing out consolidation areas to give retest targets. Combining that with my strategy, I've been able to time my entries and exits much better. Kyle, let's go, dude. Hot damn. I, that's, that is, uh, man, I, yeah, more comments like that, please. More cowbells. Um, that, that's good stuff. I might do a backflip for real now. All right, I keep some, like I think my house is on fire. It's not. I um, I'm stripping my cast iron pans right now, and that shit stinks. All right, so PLTR. What do we got next? Uh, can I do the VIX? Well, yes, I can. Um, a lot of the times, this one is not a daily time frame charter. You know, you stick usually stick with the four hour or something like that. Stay stay in a reasonable time frame. This one looks like it's in a this thing looks like it's about to dump hard. Uh, I'll see you at 2450. Uh, 2450 to the downside, the VIX. So um, this one, one, two, three. I find it almost improbable to be moving to the upside. Doesn't mean it won't happen. Um, but look for this uh, 2440, 2450 level to get broken. Uh, and then from there, I would say you're liable to hit the $23 area and possibly even support once again. So um, $23.15, uh, that's my target, $23.15. And then you know what's gonna happen here is this is gonna form a larger consolidation pattern on the VIX. So, oh, and or it just breaks, but uh, watch 23 bucks for the VIX. Where can I, uh, where can I learn how to trade stocks? Um, you can do that in a ton of different places. Um, I, have, I have a free step-by-step -step in my Discord. You're welcome to go through it. Um, but there is a ton of different traders out here. I, I don't trade pennies. We have, we have seven different admins in our Discord, um, but I'm not trying to get people to, to obviously join our Discord. Um, you know, when you're in the beginning process, if you're brand new, you don't need to be paying for anything. You need to be scrounging the internet um, and, and really soaking in um, as much as you can. Even, even when it comes to listening to me, you know, listen to me, but also go listen to somebody else. Go back check that information, you know, back check the things that I say. Um, you know, that way that you feel confident in what you're learning, um, if that's what you feel that you need to do. Um, but uh, that that's in that learning process, you're going to figure out what's right for you, right? Pennies, very risky, uh, seasonal, um, some, sometimes like Zach Morris. I haven't heard about that guy in so long, but guarantee you this time next year, there's going to be some random new stock that dude's pumping. You know what I mean? And everybody's pretending like he's just got this like wizardly pick, you know, but, um, but that's it, you know? So like explore the bad, the good, 
um, ask questions and don't allow anybody to talk down on your learning journey because uh, that's the last thing you need. So, um, CEI, yeah, you, I didn't even have to say anything. You already knew. Well, that's the VIX. Um, Costco is next. Delicious. Yo, Costco is is wild, and I, I I don't know why I was even surprised. This one's looking like it's got a cup and handle. Um, here's 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 the number one thing I think I see right now. Uh, so let's move to the fifteen. I'm gonna start on the fifteen. So check out the way that we closed yesterday. Now, how we open next week, I think that's gonna be pretty important. What you got here is an EMA. That's a confluence, right? Dynamic trend line makes a whole lot of sense. Now, where's my key level? There's the consolidation right there. Boom, boom, boom. We've got a whole bunch of data. Beautiful. Uh, so at the moment, looking at um, looking at Costco, I would say that the most bullish scenario here is to pull back, uh, to pull back to around 463.50. If you move up, uh, I would say that I'm not going to say that's like completely bear or bullish bearish, um, but then you would just see a harder fall. Um, but this this does kind of give off the bear flag fall. So you might see a little bit of a pullback here first, a good, healthy pullback. Um, and that could again, I'm placing my target based on where the data is at now. Uh, it is entirely possible there's a multitude of things that can happen here because it's the 15 minute time frame you could jump up right you could open up at the bell you could flush right down and dump down to uh, 464 uh, and then run right back up for an ascending triangle entirely possible um, but moving back out to the four hour because we're not going to spend a ton of time on that um, consolidating that data we see we have a kind of a little uh, it's a low volume and uh, the the actual uh, candlestick name is is failing me right now but oftentimes these little candles will give way to a little bit of a pullback um, and what this candle means to me is it means that it was weak buying we had low volume and we had a, a low range or um, small movement to the upside so i would say that just a little bit more consolidation here and it could be a hyper bullish bear flat or bull or a hyper bullish um uh, cup and handle. So there are actual, actually a multitude of different kinds of cup and handles. Um, there are more bearish cup and handles where you'll actually see a return all the way down to like this level, which would be supply. That's obviously not happening. Um, and then you have the, you know, just regular bear flags. You have these rising bull flags or um, cup and handles where it's more bullish. Um, and then you get a pullback to the top of the cup and then you run. So um, last thing that I'm going to add here, uh, just just one more thing okay um and i do this because everything you know charting is exploratory uh, especially in the beginning um this resistance here um so watch for costco to potentially pull back to around 460 uh where the 20-day ema is at as well as this and i'm not even gonna mark a new one i'm just gonna drop this one so that level right there so that opening candle right there that's 460 30 that's where we opened in pre-market um and if this trend line breaks then i would anticipate costco going for a gap fill so gaps both to the up and the downside so what do i think about cei um i think whatever happened uh, I, I i've never heard anything good about them um i didn't put too much time or effort into understanding what they were project i just knew that it was bullshit um most of the things that they were all of the it was insane it was insanity to be honest with you i even looking back at it i'm, I'm i still am dumbfounded on on how like the sec didn't even get involved you know like that shit was blatantly like i i, I don't know i can't i could go forever on it but it would just looked blatantly fraudulent. So, um, okay. So first things first is, uh, you got a nice little, um, wedge off the bottom here. Perfect. 
you're all built up. This is likely going to move up with crypto um, in general. Uh, I personally, just looking at this immediately, I see 1185. That's that's my first would be my first initial um, target. Just just looking at this chart at the moment, um, and then that actually lines up with this uh, moving average coming down. You just just crossed your whole ribbon indicator for the first time since April 5th. So that this ribbon is a um, momentum indicator, kind of lets me know uh, if you cross above it and it turns green, looking for continuation there. If you cross below it, it flips red. You're looking for continuation that way as well. Um, so this one is crossed above it um, and I'm just looking for you know an establishment of supply and demand. It is pretty easy to see uh, that this is your key level right here. Okay, so this is where I'm anticipating 1185 on Mara to the upside. You've got good volume. Um, you've got a good bounce. You've got a good engulfment candle. Uh, I would imagine on the weekly. Yep, you got a nice little doji there sitting at the bottom. So yeah, watch for uh, Mara to give you a little bounce back up. I think it's bounce time for Mara. Uh, the stock's dead though, so why do you talk shit yo are you talking to star boy or i don't think he's here dude are you asking why um yeah let me know what you're what you're asking what happens uh happens a lot with penny stocks uh like sundial yep which indicator to use? Is it free? It is free and it is the in silico whole ribbon suite. Okay, whole ribbon suite. It's actually in my discord. So uh, it, next to the Potter stock thing. Tesla had a reverse head and shoulders 20 through 23rd. Yes, into a base rally base bullish flag. I did go over Apple, yep. Uh, I see Mara, QCOM, the price, the sides of the screen, the price cut off of the stream. It, it is? Oh, oh, whoops. There. All right, so yeah, no problem. Uh, have a look at the target gap fill. Yes, it is free. It is free. All right, so we've got um, Mara. We've got uh, Qcom. All right, so let's take a look at Q. Ooh, I already have it charted for you. Oh, man. Yo, that's getting on the watch list. Hop on there, Qcom, my friend. Oh, they got dividends. Okay. Qcom. They got a cute little setup here. Take it on a date. Okay. So that's a falling wedge. And the 50% reversal setup is in the 200 day moving average. It's all, man. I, just by looking at this chart, I could see, I could see exactly like where I could set everything and there would be a perfect confluence. So number one, um, you've got uh, the 200 day EMA uh, and your supply uh, all in one right around 150 to 149.20. Um, you've got a falling wedge and anytime I have a falling wedge on any given time frame, I'm going to measure from the top of the wedge to the bottom of the wedge and I'm going to divide it in half. And if I divide it in half, you'll find that you are, and again, that would be my target, right? So delete that. There you go. That would be how I usually play these inverse head and shoulders. And you'll find that that is literally on the scent, the 200 day EMA. So 150.50. Don't at me. Or do at me actually. At me. If, if this happens. Uh, Garrett on PLTR it touched the descending triangle sort of three times. It could explode to 26 barring. It overcomes the micro bear flag. Am I being delusional? No, you're not. 
You're not. No, that's absolutely plausible. So um, <clears throat> first off, so don't get excited and don't start FOMOing to something that has not happened yet. Um, so number one, there's going to be the 141.85. 141.85. You've got 143. And then finally, you're going to have, I mean, really, you've got low volume here, but um, I would say watch 146.85, but that, that'll be, you know, day trader scalpers and stuff like that. But if you're going long, I think 150 is a good strike. So I'm writing this down, following the ledge. I don't know about y'all, the reason that I write down, so like I write QCOM, falling wedge, 150 target, 50% reversal, um, and then, you know, volume or dividends are coming or like 200 day EMA confluence, because I don't know if you guys wake up sometimes in the morning and like have to completely reorient yourself to reality and who you are like that happens sometimes. So it's nice to have a couple little like footnotes, you know, here and there to like look back on um qcom for this friday call expiration can i simplify the chart sure thing yeah i don't mind doing that so let's take away the emas whole ribbon volume profile there you go so just looking at it simply right and those are this is a uh, first yellow line 143.23 23. looks good to me i think from there you're probably going to see the 146.85 level Right about there and then right after that you should see yeah i would say 1 150 149.80 hopefully that makes it simpler but i don't know if it was the indicators or uh i wouldn't go with i don't know if i would go and pick a 150 strike for friday maybe next week here, here's how, I mean, and again, you know, I, I'm, I'm multifaceted and certain to an extent, but, um, you know, like if, if I'm looking at this and like, okay, I want to, I want to play this, you know, in going into next or, or I want to play this target to 150, you have to think about timing. You have to think about like, you know, how plausible, it, you know, timing wise, is it to see QCOM run that hard, that fast? And based on all the uptrend moves that I see for QCOM, um, not that fast. And uh, usually they get faded really, really quick. Um, so it would be one of those things where you would want to, the, the farther, the way that I look at it is I'm like, okay, if 150 is my target right now on the daily time frame, that's where the pattern is at. That's what I see, the daily time frame, right? That's where I have to set a contract out that goes at least three weeks, right? Because I know that maybe three weeks, maybe two, depending on the, you know, the velocity, you know, and volume and sentiment behind that stock. But something like QCOM that's been holding, yeah, okay, volume, um, choppy, but sporadic. Uh, you know, it's one of those ones because it is so sporadic and it does have these massive rejections. So we'd have to be very careful. And so I would set my safety into my expiration by buying something that at least expires again, two to three weeks out. So, uh, yeah, you could definitely, um, you could definitely not a lot of liquidity in next week's strikes, wait till it opens and possibly wait for dividends, wait for div uh, that is tomorrow. So possibly maybe a little bit of movement after that. We'll see. Uh, you have hit, uh, let, let me, let's zoom out really quick, okay, uh, and do one last thing. So this insane support for QCOM, we, and I mean, like, I, I guess I could just say you, you hit it, you know, because it's it's not one singular level, um, but it's uh, 125, 126. Uh, there's a little macro, micro level below it at 120, uh, 122.70, but um, that's, that's, I mean, uh, technically, right, Technically, this thing can literally just keep going down. Uh, it is, it, it's in a downtrend, um, and this is a reversal pattern that does not have to, you know, come to fruition at all. Uh, it could just simply fall from here since it's at resistance. But uh, based on what I can see, uh, this thing has at least uh, anywhere over 142, you might see some liquidity return to those strikes outside of the money. But again, 
Um, <clears throat> this isn't a stock that I would actually uh, play unless that liquidity returned or if some volume returned to those contracts. So um, more than likely, you would probably have to either either day trade it by day um, using a shorter expiration right outside of the money or uh, just leave it alone. So uh, if there's ever a stock that you find that doesn't have a great catalyst um, and uh, I don't know. Uh, doesn't have a great catalyst and has low liquidity like that, and makes you question. It causes you to question whether it's going to be. Don't just stop right there, and do yourself a favor and don't. Right. If you feel it, listen to your gut. Right. Uh, if you feel it and it doesn't feel right. Don't find out the hard way or find out the hard way. You know, sometimes that we got to learn that way too, but make sure to bring your risk down if you're going to do some dumb stuff. If you're going to be dumb, you really do have to, you know, use good risk management or be tough or have no emotions because you're going to lose money. Um, yes, yeah, SPY does look bullish this week. I, I concur. So um, anyway, QCOM, uh, Disney... If you're scalping, it's okay to buy. Yeah. So when I say that it's not like, when I say, I, I mean, I would, I don't know how to like word that. I would say that like in the grand scheme of things, right? Like I'm dealing with a lot of new traders. Um, as the owner of the chat, you know what I mean? So when I'm, when I'm talking, um, you know, I, I know that the most, I would say the, the vast majority of the people that I'm speaking to uh are new and so yeah you know i i um try to make sure that i'm reaffirming that but here's what i don't want you guys to do is not explore that you know go ahead trade those options you know if you have and this is what i've been trying to say if you guys are on tiktok you guys haven't been able to catch this advice and I'm going to make a TikTok about it because it's 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 got it's got to be the most important thing I think. Period. If you want to see your win rate go up, um, but I mean, obviously, you have to have some type of system in place or this is bullshit, right? But if you know that you still have a lot more to learn, and the market gives you a gift, you found a play, you played it, it exploded, you did really really well. Start over again. Either the market starts you over again or you do it because if you know that you have more to learn and you know that winning is a double-edged sword then do it yourself think about that this week okay if you're up it's a new month right if you have a great week to start the week off and you know where you're at and i think this is just being real with yourself right being real about where you're at in your trading career are you in, are you, have you, been, and this is, I just got up out of my seat damn near. Um, if you've been trading for three months, stop trying to do it all. And, and if you're in our discord, you know, there's a couple of y'all who have been trading um, for a very short amount of time. And I see you all trying to like literally pull, like y'all are trying to follow, um, you know, bull spreads and like, you know, and, and, and so like, yes, you are learning immersing yourself right is great for learning but drowning yourself is just something you can look back at you know and be like damn that sucked you know and then learn from it but um just think about that you know it is it is something that you know it takes a it takes a strong individual to, to look at yourself and be like yo uh, i'm four months into trading and somehow i've been doing great I may need to start looking at starting with a lower amount, $500. If you can do it $500, you can do it, period. I'm telling y'all. And I that is how I built my strategy to this day. I started with 500. I built it to 10K. I blew my account more times than I wish to speak about. And then I finally... So I never really lost 10K, right? I mean, I did, but I didn't. Um, I just was making that out of 500 and then trying to push it past. I don't know why I had that mental block. 
Um, I think it was just me get, having more money than I was really used to and then trying to just make a miracle happen. Um, but instead, at some point, I was like, you know what? No, that's my money. Like, fuck. You know, like I've already made this like 10 times over. And so I took the money out, put it in my account. Well, at the time, we were in a bull market. So I was able to buy SPY shares, right? I just bought SPY, all of it, put it in there. And I just did that over and over again. Sometimes it took me two weeks, three weeks to get to 10K from 500 immediately. 10K like that day into SPY. Um, and then I started over again. And I did that until I looked back, y'all. And I, in between that time, I, I lost my money. Like I did blow $500 after making, it didn't just, it wasn't just like cherries. Like I would make that 10K, pull it out, run the 500 and you know sometimes i was my, i was just getting too ahead of myself and i would forget you know like kind of those fundamentals but what that did is it nailed home some of those strategies and some of those key things that i have to look for before getting into a trade entries exit stop losses so um he saw the setup on by baba miles away before it happened and it's the nuances that, I don't know if you're talking about me, but I sure hope you are. Because <laughs> I did. That's the only one I might... You might hear me gloat a little bit about shorting Baba. I might I might, I might, hit the gloat one, one time. So uh, as far as regards to strategy, I'm, I'm as far as a, a day trader, I'm, I'm a day trader, swing trader. Um, I, I mostly look for just, I'm looking at simple supply and demand in combination with an EMA system, right? I'm looking at EMA crossovers and using those moving averages as well as these key levels, supply and demand um, in order to, to, to play. So key levels, um, yeah, I'm talking about me. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, check out Target, man. I, I got you. I got you in just a second, man. I'm 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 almost done. All right. So, like most of their counterparts, like most stocks, these channels have been built one, two off the top. We are currently approaching what looks to be a lower time frame downtrend. One, two. We're going for our third. Watch for a gap up 110.30. If we do gap up to 110.30 or 111, watch for if we gap up to 111.50, watch for a pullback retest out um, with the next target on Disney being around 116.24. Easy peasy. Um, so if this is a solid bounce, right? We're just going to mark these levels out. Look at that little supply and demand four hour. If you can't see it very well. Here, let me see something. Let me see if I would I would turn my light off. It makes it easier for TikTok. I think that might actually oops. Okay. I just want to make sure you guys can see it there. You guys don't mind tapping your screen mark. 15k likes. I don't think I've ever had a 20. Well, I had 20k once. I've never had 30k. All right. So anyway, um, we're up against, um, or going up to, excuse me, that that um, supply level uh, as well as that downtrend. So you guys know the deal. Any we. Anytime we're running up to resistance, you know, I don't like to long resistance. I want to see some either A, a little bit of a pullback in order to kind of like slingshot us out of there, or I want to see a clean break and then a retest. So if we do move up, watch 111.85 and one or 12, 12 dollars. Um, that would likely be the target that I would look up to the upside. Zooming in and looking at the hourly time frame, this looks just like Tesla. It looks like most like most stocks where it kind of has that weird elongated bull flag. Um, these get these fail very easily, and as you can tell, we've left without a retest. Lower time frame also tells me that we have a trend line here, and that trend line, if you guys remember the spy analysis, goes perfectly with that. So watch for a possible move up to that 110 level, maybe 109.80. Um, and then a pullback. Um, again, maybe not even the entirety of the gap, um, but uh, I would say 105.75 to 106. 
Um, and that would be good. It would be good. It wouldn't be bad unless you fell more. If you fell more, you're screwed. But All right. Um, 20, yes, you got a lot, a lot of really nice EMA crosses here on the hourly too. Uh, licks. I think I, I did I did answer that a little bit earlier. I think. Did you ask that earlier? Oh, maybe not. All right. So the next one that we got is Zip. Uh, Z I P. Uh, Zip Recruiter. Yeah. Okay. I remember these guys. Yo. So that candle looks pretty bullish. Uh, for the most part, um, it can fail. But uh, watch above eighteen forty five. Number one. We're on the weekly time frame, so we're gonna zoom back in. Uh, let's mark out some key levels here. So this one uh, is gonna be relatively easy to box out. So there's one, that's where we're at now. There's two, that's 1890. And 1950. This is pretty much by every dollar are these zones. Okay, so here we go. Um, running it from and I'm going to go to the four hour now that I got these key levels on the daily marked out. Now I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. So that may be a downtrend. You've got a 200 day EMA up there around 2484. Um, again, this is probably one of those setups that there we go. Okay. So ignore that and look at this. So this is zip on the four hour. And it looks like, it looks like it's about to go and hit 1916. How much money do I make a day? Um, I aim for about 1500 to 2000 bucks a day. Um, that's my average. That's usually what I go for. Um, but I also lose money sometimes. I had a couple red, uh, I had a, couple of red days in uh, the beginning of May. But uh, I bounced back pretty good. Is now the megaphone got you. In order to get to 10K in two weeks, do you focus on the percentage gain or do you just ride it out of your price? I listen, listen, Alex, that is a really good question. In order to get to 10K in two weeks, you need to focus on trading the chart. Wipe the gains, wipe the percentage get targets out of your mind. You play the chart. Stop worrying about the gains. You play the chart and you'll look at it and you'll be there. I, I'm telling you, the, the more that I looked at my, the more that I looked at it, um, uh, yeah, the, the more that I would look at the, the, the number gains, the worse it would get. Um, so, you know, there, there is, you know, like a cap, you know, if you've traded and you had a great day, it was 800 bucks, like that's great. But for the most part, I start every day the same. I have a series of stocks that I'm looking at. I have a series of setups that I'm looking at. I'm looking at the most high probability one. And if it's a small account, I'm looking at the the is technical analysis the key to getting profits? No, it's a factor. It's a tool in getting profits. Um, it's a, um, yeah, the, the, it's a tool because there is a multitude of different things that you have to carry into technical analysis. There are some people who are purely TA. There's nothing fundamental about them. They don't, some of them care less what the companies do. They're just looking at the chart. Um, and they'll tell you that profits are there, but I, I haven't seen it. Uh, I've never seen a strictly technical guy, um, do anything, uh, or at least hold a sustainable profit. So on average, how much do I make a month? Um, I don't really feel super comfortable answering, uh, net worth questions. Um, but I will say that, uh, if I, I usually, I would say about 70 to 65% of the time I'm hitting my daily target, which is about a thousand to 1500 bucks. 
So if you did, if you just did some math on that, you know, that'll tell you uh, a light projection. But I also have seventeen thousand dollar days. Sometimes I uh, that's the last big day that I had it was a seventeen thousand dollar day. Um, I've had fifty six thousand dollar days. I've had you know I've I've had a lot of crazy knockouts. So uh, fluctuates. <laughs> Thank you for doing this on Memorial Day holiday, back to reality. Well, I thought about doing it Sunday, but then I was like, everybody's going to get drunk and then forget about it. Uh, what was my biggest last day? Um, I believe I played, I think it was Tesla. Yeah, I think it, Tesla was one of my last big days shorting. Um, I'm this, this drop right here. Uh, that drop right there on Tesla, uh, I made 14 grand um, on this whole entire drop. Um, we signaled this one. It was a, This is literally like this right here. If you ever see this again, just send it, all right? And that's not financial advice. Uh, I could be talking about dirt bikes, you know, whatever. But send it because, geez, one, two, three, four, five. At that point... If you start heading down to that sucker, damn, I remember you sold early that day too. I hopped back in, Cusco. I got right back in. Like uh, after I was done uh, trading, uh, I came back and it had, I think it had consolidated around its 200 AEMA. I hit it one last time and I hit it hard. So uh, it, it also helps when you're trading 10 contracts, 15 contracts of Tesla. Um, it adds up very, very quick. So. Hey, Wayne from Australia, how do you think Bitcoin's going to do it uh, the next couple of months? Um, you know, I, I charted it today and I usually don't do crypto, but I guess it's, I mean, it's a, it's a part of the, the thing right now. So uh, personally, um, I see Bitcoin running up for a simple supply test. Uh, I also have a beautiful downtrend uh, starting off the top. This th this thing, I, I don't know. The, the analysis on this one seems kind of straightforward, but people make it really complicated, which makes me doubt myself kind of in a way. Uh, but I, I see uh, the 38K K mark getting hit. But I also see Bitcoin falling still more, harder, faster, stronger. Sorry. Uh, okay, so, uh, well, uh, in regards to Bitcoin too, uh, and I'll just throw this out there, um, this could be, and I'm not saying it is, but this could be a daily falling wedge. So take that with a grain of salt. But after calculation, you make 22K per month. Not bad. Yes, that's, a, I would say, a, a reasonable average, yes. Thank you. Bank from Wayne. At what age did I start trading? Uh, I was 24, 25 uh, when I got into to, to trading. So who was that guy who stayed in too long? I have no idea, homie. <laughs> I have no idea. There's so many people who always stay in too long. There's people, you know, and, and I get it. You know, there's there's nerves and stuff like that. But you know, I, I alert some things and people will be listening to me and still not do the thing that I said. And they'll be like, well, I thought, and, and this is, this is another video that I got to make on TikTok because it's just really the best way that I can put it. If you want to just take signals and follow someone for the rest of your life, stop feeling and thinking anything. Just do it. Just do it. Like just follow the signals and just take them and listen to everything that that person says. You know what I mean? Like, I guess. Or like the other thing is like you become your own trader who's more dynamic and not stuck in a box, which most people are, um, and uh, able to fluidly, you know, learn, change, mold your, your, you know, your strategy into something that works for you. Um, because again, you know, if this is, if this is a craft of emotions and every human is just a little bit different, 
perceives just a little bit different then you know we could be looking at the same thing seeing two different things so it's it's important um uh yeah <laughs> um do you think we're going to have another positive week i kind of do yeah i do have a discord um so those of you asking uh i do have a discord and if you are new all right and it is not like it, it is what it is if you are brand new to trading we're not here for you okay we're, we're here for you here in these forms um and in the future with uh more like educational interactive stuff but i do not want anybody paying uh i do not want you like i'm telling you right now like if i was in front of you i would say no don't stop it you know i do not want you paying for anything including my discord so if you are new and you're listening to me uh and you haven't traded a lot um just ask questions right now like or tomorrow or every other day that i'm live which is pretty much every single day on youtube if you want to make sure that those questions are the highest probability of getting asked is on my youtube so you're always always welcome to hit me up there but um you know that the, the, take advantage of what is out there because the majority of the people selling services this is the, what goes through their mind is they realize that most people, and this is the way that they word it, they, they believe that most people are too lazy to get the information themselves. But the reality of it is that there's so much information out there that people are seeking guidance. And that's where people go and copy and paste the information and sell it to people. And that's where I get pissed, you know, so. Um, but anyway, soak up as much information as you can ask as many questions as you can and stay involved with the, the lives set goals for yourself and i promise you you don't need like that feeling of feeling lost and like not knowing what the hell is going on like first of all calm down but it will go away what you feel right now will go away and it will get better the more information that you gather and it will get easier the more you know i always think of any any new information is a dot on the map so if you look at it you know like if you were to even do a connect the dots right because that's kind of how the i look at the brain you know like if you put a dot on there there's nothing to connect it so it's going to be very confusing add a couple more dots all right and then we'll see where we go from there so I lost 30k now just now just started profiting pure game of risk management i love it i love it that account is twerking let me see it. uh how do i see nvidia this week up i think we'll see i think a little bit of red and then a little bit of green starting this week off all right well um if you are not subscribed to our youtube channel i very much would appreciate if you guys would lend me your subscription i'll give it back to you when i'm done um and uh we we live tomorrow uh around uh 8 30 8 45 eastern time on youtube um for the news so if you want to catch the news that's where we'll be if i am up early or if i'm able to be at my desk uh very early in the morning then i will alert uh, those of you in the discord and possibly on TikTok, and I'll go ahead and go live and we'll start chopping it up, um, about what's going to happen, uh, tomorrow. So, um, awesome. Well, um, I look forward to, to seeing you make sure to DM me. Um, and, and this is my last message for the night. Um, if you are in the discord, I, I, I can, I have a lot going on. I know that some of you who DM me, uh but here's what i don't want if i don't respond i do not get bothered okay like at some point like you guys should see some of the things that people do to get my attention all right it's a little weird um but uh that being said please ask me questions all right if you are in or especially if you pay for our discord for god's sakes don't sit in there in silence speak up i'm a human being just behind a different computer screen right now and i'm happy to talk to you and answer those questions or refer you to somebody who can or send you a link or whatever the case need uh, needs we'll figure it out so um i am new to trading what is a discord um it it is a it is a trading platform i've got to make a video on how to use discord i think that's like a huge hurdle so 
Um, it is just a, it's just a kind of place where we all gather. The link is in the bio. You'll have to download the app, but, uh, make your own username and, uh, you, you can kind of flirt around with, uh, you know, just click around on stuff. Um, I'll make a video soon. Um, I do have a, if you go to the map part section, if you see the map, when you click on the discord and you get into our discord, which you'll have to accept the invite, uh, the free part of it, um, has a map video. So, all right, Chris. Chris, I don't know if you're listening right now, man, but I, I, I don't know, dude, do you have a random guy on the other side of America, dude, who like spent multiple times this weekend thinking about things that can help you like, you know, like do better this week, man. So I am invested in trying to make sure that that you get over this hurdle, dude. Um, so please, uh if you have to have a level of accountability and reach out to me before you enter something, I would like for you to do that, man. And I'm in the discord. Do not do it on YouTube. Be in the YouTube or be in the discord. Okay. Good job. Yeah. I saw that comment. I lost 30k. Just started profiting. That's awesome. Uh, Tesla charts for your top. Uh, Mike diesel. I already did Tesla. Uh, just go to the YouTube and we'll wind it back. I think your I think your phone's wigging out. Um, not to say that I I don't care. Uh, I thought I thought you just didn't like me. Wait, what? What did I miss? Yeah, somebody asked what Discord was. Um, you'll be up early early tomorrow. All right, man. Well, tonight. Listen. Uh, Chris, go to go and look at the, the 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 stocks that are on the right side of my list. Look for stocks that have out of the money contracts expiring at the end of this week or next week that are under a hundred and fifty to two hundred bucks. Here's what you you should also think about too for anybody who's new or has small accounts, even if it's more expensive, right? Oh no, dude, I do not ignore DMs. Uh, I promise I don't. I think about responding and that's like oftentimes the action, enough action sometimes for my brain to keep moving. So like I'll literally think about the response and then like, oh, hold on, I'll answer that in a second. And then uh, two weeks go by. So uh, name is PTO on Discord. Awesome. Yeah. Also, I'll keep an eye out for you, bro. Um, but uh, anyway, Chris uh, and anybody else, um, make sure that you are finding stocks and looking at contracts that expire um that have good expirations and do not be scared to it is it, you lose money uh at a slower rate if you buy out further okay so just think about that this the, the closer an expiration that asset is immediately deteriorating in value okay if somebody sold you a book that disintegrates after like every time you turn the page you know, like, by the end of the book, it's just gone. Like, you wouldn't buy it, right? You just wouldn't do it. Or maybe you wouldn't because it'd be kind of cool. But, um, yeah, see you in the trading war. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm looking at some cheap stocks. So, cheap stocks are good, too, right? AAL, CCL, Uber, Ford, Twitter. All great. But what is the other, other dynamic here that you need to look for, Chris? You need to look for volume, right? Because that's what moves the stocks. So in the morning, when you're listening to the news, also anybody uh, listening here on TikTok, if you guys or on YouTube, uh, if you guys want my scanner or what I use like to watch for stocks, news, uh, new highs, block trades, uh, this this is Benzinga Pro. I have a link in my bio. Um, it does cost money, but you can, you know, you know what I mean. Uh, you put your phone number in there. So if you and your wife got a phone, uh, they give you a two week trial for free. So just hit the link in my bio and give it a shot because having the news coming in in the morning is vital. Like for me, I have to have the news. If you don't want to pay for it, there are other squawk boxes out there. They're just obviously going to be delayed. So, uh, but that's been Zinga Pro. Tomorrow's Tuesday is the start of the new week. So uh, if you want to give it a shot, it's definitely worth worth checking out. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, call it a night. And uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, if you guys don't mind, before you take off from the YouTube channel, make sure to leave a like. Same thing for the TikTok. As always, I really appreciate each and every one of you for tuning into my channel, supporting the whole journey. You guys are awesome. 
um, wouldn't have a platform if it wasn't for you. So uh, I appreciate you guys as well. So um, yeah, uh, I will check my DMs before uh, I go to bed and in the morning. So if I don't get to your DM tonight, it'll be tomorrow. Um, but uh, anyway, have a good night. Now it's that awkward time before I close all of my streams, you know? It's just kind of silent.